Hello and welcome to video tutorials for exponential and logarithmic functions with your host, me, Mr. Todd Loki. We're going to cover these five topics and so let's get started with our first one, graphing exponential functions. I know you're as excited as I am. So let's get started here. The first thing that I want to cover is what these functions look like. Okay, Classification of exponential functions, they come in two forms growth and decay. And we'll get more on on what aspects of that uh, make them growth and which ones make them decay. But I just want you to see what they look like first. So we're going to start with ones where the leading coefficient is positive. That means that the overall equation is positive. And growth means it's going to grow up and getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Okay. On the other hand, decay is something that uh, over time is getting chopped in half and half and half or by a third by a third and it's approaching this horizontal asymptote whereas in growth it's leaving it. But we could take this whole growth function and multiply the whole thing by negative which would make all of the values of this sign negative and so it would switch around that horizontal asymptote wherever it happens to be and would look like this. So this is a growth function, okay? but it just has a leading negative, so it makes all the values negative. Notice that it's moving away from the x-axis or away from the horizontal asymptote in both cases. In decay, it's getting closer to that horizontal asymptote where for our base functions will be the, the x-axis. So when you multiply that equation by a negative number, you're going to get something like this. So keep these two things in mind, positive coefficients are up and then down and negative leading coefficients are going to take those two things and switch them over. Okay, we're going to talk first about our base functions and they are comprised of functions of the form ab to the x power where a is our leading coefficient in the previous mini lesson. So we're going to take a look at these and the key is recognize the type of function, do a quick in out table, two values, get on with business, let's get this thing done. All right, so we're going to make a quick in out table. And we're going to do two, two values. We're always going to do zero. Zero into this term right here makes this one all the time. And so we get this initial value is three. We call this number right here the initial value, just like the $27,755,000 price tag on our 2009 Toyota Tundra. The initial value there, this is our growth or decay factor. Uh, this is growth because 2 is greater than 1. If our b is greater than 1, we have growth. So let's put a 1 in for here. When I put in a 1, this term is 2. This is 3, so I have 3 times 2, which is 6. So let's plot those points. We get 0, 3 and 1, 6 over 1, up 6. So this is going to help us see that this is a growth function and it's going up and away. So remember the pictures from the last one and just sketch starting close to the axis there and getting steeper all the time until we're off the top of the page. Okay. Notice on the left here that it gets closer and closer but doesn't loop away, things like that. Here's another function, but you'll notice some differences in this one. So let's do a little in-out table really quick to compare the effects. In this case, b is less than 0, or less than 1. So b, it means that every time we go up 1 with x, we're chopping the previous number in half. So if I put 0 in, anything to the 0 power is still 1, so we get our initial starting value. But this one has a leading negative, so we're going to be the opposite of a function. We're going to look like this guy over here. Okay. Um, so because this is decay, let's go ahead and do negative 1. This just means it's going to get bigger on this side. So when I get that, I'm going to have negative 3 times negative 1, or 1 half to the negative 1 is going to actually make that 2, so this becomes negative 6. 
Notice that that looks a, a lot like the one up here, but it's negative. So let's do these points. 0, negative 3, uh, negative 1, negative 6. And this one is going to approach the axis here, getting less and less and less and less steep. But it's never going to cross that axis. There we go. So these are our base functions. Keep these in mind, purposefully doing this. So let's go ahead and go on to the next um, activity where we've got some new equations in the general form. Y equals AB to the X minus H plus K. H and X are our famous shifting functions. We did the activity called families and functions, and we know that the H deals with it in terms of shifting uh, left right and the K right here is um, up and down. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to strip functions out of here. We're going to strip this down, we're going to remove the shifting, and we're going to write our base function as this. Just negative 2 times 3 to the X. Again, this is growth. It's going to look like this but we're going to take that negative and it's going to flip it upside down with that negative, okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we'll do a quick table of values here. Always starting with zero. That makes this value one at our initial starting point. Uh, it's growth, so I'm going to do one. This becomes three times negative two. It's negative six. Let's plot these really quick. Zero, negative two and 1, negative 6. That is that, that we're going to get the growth shape. It's just going to be flipped upside down. So I'm going to grab a squiggly line here because this is what this function looks like before we shift it. Okay. That being said, now we need to shift. We're going to do 1 to the left and two up. So each point goes up two over one. Up two over one. That also means that we're going to shift our um, uh, we're going to shift our horizontal asymptote. So I'm going to do a dotted line. It's going to go up two units. So it's going to be right there. So let's graph the new function by realizing it's going to go through these two points, but now it's going to have an asymptote through that point right there. Okay, so our red line finishes off that equation. It gets shifted over to the left one and up two. In the second equation, let's pull out the base, but you'll recognize that this is a decay function because b is less than one. So our base function is 3 times 1 fourth to the x. Quick in-out table. Do not skip these steps. 0, again, is going to give us just the initial value. Negative 1 is going to give us 12. See that? This to the negative 1 is going to become 4. Flip that baby upside down, multiply by 3. Okay. So let's plot some points. 0, 3, 1, 2, 3. And 1, 12. This is 10, 11, 12 right here. Okay. And, oops, negative 1. Let's slide that baby over. So we can do this right there. Okay. So um, our curve is going to be descending really steeply. So let's take a look at what this would look like. And remember, base functions, horizontal asymptote, always at y equals 0, which reminds me, I'm a stickler here. So I'm going to label this guy y equals 2. Okay. And now let's do our shifting. So each of these points has to go left 2 and up 3. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go to the left 2, 1, 2, and up 3. There's one point. And to the left 2 and up um, 3, right there. Sorry, I'm a little low on that first point. 
Now with this, what that's going to do is it's going to create uh, a new horizontal asymptote right here at y equals to y equals um, 3. So watch for that. Now this decay is coming down and across and never touches that. I'm sorry, this should be cruise right through here. And there we go. Okay. And we've got our two curves. Growth in red, decay in blue. To summarize this method, you're going to graph the base function in the form of a equals a, a b to the x, and then shift each of the points by left, right, by 